Hey, you guys. Um, as you probably know, I'm the real sack right here. And, um, basically, I just wanted to let you guys know that, um, one of my reactions that I couldn't put up on my channel, um, got copyrighted. Um, it is now on my, uh, fan page, um, The Real Sakurai on, on Facebook. So, if you guys are interested in looking at that, just go to the link down below in, in the comments down below. I'm, I'm gonna pin it to the, uh, the top of the page so that everyone can see it. But, um... It's right there. So if you guys are interested in that, um, be feel free to, to click uh, click on that and enjoy the ride. Uh, I'll see you guys there. Hey, what is going on, you guys? Here's your truly the real sack ride, and we are back. Again, to react into the more to more nostalgia critic um, videos, and this one we're gonna be reacting to Jungle Book, the one um, movie review that he did of Jungle Book. Now, I can honestly tell you that when this first got announced and it came out, I wasn't too really hyped about it because I'm a big fan of the old Jungle Book. Like, like I I, I was okay with them not even touching this. But, of course, they touched it. So, without further ado, let's just have a nice little look at this and see what the Nostalgia Quick has to say. the nostalgia critic guy remember it so you don't have to it may surprise some of you that i'm actually a huge fan of the jungle book no no not that one right no no not that one either the actual book it's surprising how many people don't know there's a literary source to the jungle book yeah the there is a collection of stories by ruyar kipling mostly they all have um ongoing separations yet parallels between book sources and fostering law and freedom and the coming of age balance between trying to belong yet also trying to stand out then this came along and it became the Funny Monkey Movie! And before you go I liked nuts, it. I like this film fine. The animated Disney adaptation had little connection to the best known story from the Jungle Book, Mowgli's Brothers, but it was a cute little flick with some catchy songs and memorable characters. And seeing how we're still in the middle of Disney's live action remake month. La, 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 It only figures to talk about. I'll just say it, what I think is a weirdly beloved modern version. So while most of these Disney remakes are big hits, there's usually a fair amount of people who find they can't get into what the movie is doing. Jungle Book is one of the few exceptions. Sitting at 95% on Rotten Tomatoes and getting a reputation as the grown-up version compared to the other ones, only a complete asshole would dare bam out that Oh, I thought this day would never come! <laughs> yeah, I'm that jerk off who not only didn't like it, but really didn't like it. Surprisingly, it's not because it wasn't enough like the book. The original film did that and it was fine. It's that it tries to mix the book and the movie by focusing on their least effective elements while leaving out what made the other version so memorable. What are these elements? Well, as your designated asshole, I'm excited to expand on this different point of view among a sea of disapproving comments. That's a good start. Let's take a, a look at the sandwich? Teens Jungle Book. Who calls somebody a cancer sandwich? Members, you might be wondering why the logo looks nostalgically hand-drawn even though this is live action. Y'all come up Especially with the craziest names. Especially a nostalgically hand-drawn logo they're not using. This is the confusing tone that'll accompany the next 90 minutes. Oh, whoops, we skip forward to the middle. No, wait, this is apparently clever. Okay, just starting us off in the middle of things. I guess a lot of stories do that. Let's see what it adds. <laughs> You must be the very worst wolf I've ever seen. 
a weak ass fake out we all saw coming. Anything else? Wolves don't hide in trees. I just picked the wrong tree. It was a dead tree. I'm gonna take this talk about trees as no, there is nothing else. So why do we have this generic intro? The opening to both the book and the animated film are simple, straightforward, and reveal a lot of character. Within the first few moments, we know Mowgli is an abandoned baby, a predator has the chance to kill him but doesn't, creates a connection showing love and care, and shows clearly that this is unusual and even risky, yet they still take that chance on this connection. Right. The hell with that nonsense, we have the opening to U.S. Marshals! Yeah, remember what? the sequel to The Fugitive you don't remember? They start off with a bland action sequence with the main character that doesn't tie into the rest of the movie. A lot of shitty films do that, but to be oh, fair, they oh, don't already have oh, a perfectly written I, intro I hope it's laid out else. for them. And I know, it seems like a lot to harp on so early, but the other intros really do suck you in. It shows you who they are, how they became this way, and how their world works. Right. This one, rather than showing you, tells you. When I found him many years ago, he was just an infant abandoned in the woods. That's why I entrusted him to the wolves. The book had a lot of explaining about its environment too, but it was done through Mowgli's eyes as the newcomer. Mm -hmm. If he didn't follow these rules, he'll die. We're emotionally invested. Here it sounds like what you study for a test. Arkeela was a just and noble leader, and a water truce was called. It was Raksha who raised him. It had been many, many years since the peace rock was revealed. By Lord of the Jungle, drinking comes before eating. Critic, how does the Lord of the Jungle go? Oh, um, I I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. Class. By the way, see if you can tell which lines are from one of the greatest literary minds who ever lived, and which ones are Disney writers trying to make their five-year-old laugh. The law runs over the back. But the strength of the pack is the wolf, and the strength of the wolf is the pack. There's a rock. That's my rock. That's my rock. Nothing touches my rock. There's another rock. The wolf that keeps them may prosper, but the wolf that breaks it will die. Weird. 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 That's weird. Pretty hard to tell, right? At least the other one didn't even try. They knew that lines like this. I do not call you my brothers anymore, but dogs. I see that you are indeed. Dogs. When mixed with lines like this, they were saving the more grown up version for the sequel. I Mowgli, hate the played sequel. by Neil Sethi, forms a strong friendship with Bagheera, voiced by Ben Kingsley. And to their credit, everybody in this film acts fine. Even ones chosen to act bad are surprisingly pretty good, but we'll get to that in a bit. The technology is very impressive, too, as it truly is hard to believe that all of this takes place inside a studio. But the characters and world building are still very strange. For example, Shere Khan, voiced by Idris Elba, comes to drink from the water on the day of peace. It makes a little sense and isn't from the book, but I'll give it a pass for at least trying to sound adult. A man cub becomes man, and man is forbidden. This Shere Khan, Shere Khan is odd. In the original story, he's what? a screaming, bloodthirsty thug, but still follow the laws of the jungle. In the anime one, he's calm and sophisticated, but does whatever he wants for the thrill of it. Here, they try to combine the two, and... It just doesn't add up! He has an elegant vocabulary, but he's always dirty and covered in mud. Yeah. Imagine if the anime one looked like that, he'd look ridiculous. You're trying my patience. He also goes on and on about following the law of the jungle, and that Mowgli should be killed because man is too dangerous, but... We'll get to that in a moment. Just remember I said that. For now, there's concern about whether or not the law abiding Shere Khan will not harm Mowgli. It was a question the council had to face. They deliberated and they argued for many days. It was more interesting when they showed this discussion, but right. school's not supposed to be fun. I'm leaving. No matter where you go or what they may call you, you will always be my son. Feel free to return to share our incredible moments, like hearing Bagheera talk about our incredible the moments. Moments, right. So Mowgli agrees to leave to keep the wolves safe, but Bagheera says he's going to take him to the man village, which Mowgli doesn't want to go to. Shere Khan separates them, though, as Mowgli tries hiding among the wildebeest stampede. Hmm, I saw another Disney film like this. Doesn't end well for the cat. <laughs> Mowgli gets away, though, which should make Shere Khan happy, seeing how he's finally out of the jungle. But he returns to the wolves and, well, kills their leader and holds them hostage until Mowgli returns. What?! Until I have the man cub, these hills are my hills. Okay, this brings me back to what I was saying before. What?! Now, this might sound like a dumb question at first, but really think how? about it. Like, Why? actually think it over. Why does Shere Khan want Mowgli? 
In the originals, because he lives among them. Makes sense, he thinks he's gonna grow into a man and kill them. In the anime one is for the thrill of the hunt. He loves the challenge and smiles whenever he even hears the mention of man. I'm going to close my eyes and count to ten. It makes the chase more interesting. Not to mention he chased here? Mowgli. I don't really know. If he can do whatever he wants, like in the anime of one, why didn't he just get Mowgli at the watering hole? Nobody's stopping him from taking over the wolves, so nobody would stop him there. If he follows the rules like in the book, he just threw those out the window when he killed the wolves' leader. And it yeah. doesn't matter, because Mowgli's out of the jungle anyway. There's no threat. Either way, there's no reason for him to want this damn kid. Not in character motivation or logical survival. I know they're trying to be the grown-up version, but when the adult version can't answer why and the kid version can, you're pretty much becoming DC. But don't worry, their version of Ka is sure to win you over. Yeah, you remember him? Arguably pointless, but so much fun to watch uh -huh. and dream of filming a Jungle Book movie without him. Right. It's funny, but also had a predatory creepiness to him. He, he did. Plenty the poo crossed with Herbert from Family Guy. Oh, God. You don't want me to look at you? I know what you're trying to do. Yeah, two lengthy scenes in the anime one, so let's see what they do of him here. Well, first of all, he's a she now, played by Scarlett Johansson. Poor sweet little cub. Okay, odd, but I'll see where they're going with this. She, for no reason I can figure, tells him that Shere Khan killed his father, then tries to eat him, but is knocked out by Baloo the Bear. And that's it, no more Ka. Under two minutes of no jokes, no songs, not even really any character. But man, does she use those plot points for hypnotizing people that leave no impression on our main character. Like, he doesn't even bring up, oh, it sucks that Shere Khan killed my dad. Kinda looks like he just forgets about it through most of the movie. Wow. So, which one is really better, the silly little kid version that no one remembers, or the super complex, dark and gritty grown-up version? What the hell are you people? Oh, by the way, is that the motivation for why Shere Khan wants Mowgli so bad? He wants to go after the offspring of the man who burned his face? Oh, well, he already killed the guy. I don't see what going after the offspring's gonna do. Is he also gonna say screw the law of the jungle and my livelihood because I didn't get the son of an antelope? Or the daughter of a quail? Or the nephew of a zebra? This is so <gasps> dumb if this is it! <laughs> Relax, kid. No need to get worked up, okay? So Bill Murray plays Bill Murray, voicing a bear playing Bill Murray. You owe me, kid. You owe me. I guess his distinct voice can be a little distracting, but if you never heard Little John when watching the original, you were lying to your soul. As payback for saving Mowgli's life, Baloo uses him to climb up a mountain to get him honey, telling him the bees don't sting. You said they didn't sting. What do you call this? Back off, man. I'm a scientist. Ah! Uh, go to the man village. So Mowgli decides to head to the man village. Yeah, I guess he's okay with going there again. And Baloo says he'll show him the way. You can always tell by the red flower. The red flower doesn't seem so bad. Yeah. Let it loose, and it destroys everything it touches. Kind of weird how he calls fire the red flower, but a moment earlier he used the word propaganda. That's not a song. That's propaganda. Guess they got a lot of Michael Moore movies in the jungle. What the fuck? Baloo convinces Mowgli to stay with him in the jungle as they sing a familiar tune. What's that? That's a song about the good life. Yeah, the other version they were on song three, but I guess this is a good time to do our first. Bare necessities, the simple bare necessities. I do like that Mowgli puts devices together to help get food. It actually makes me realize how pretty useless he was in the anime one. He even finds an elephant trapped in a hole and uses his ingenuity to get him out. It's actually a very nice scene. But it's botched when Bagheera finds them both and tries to take Mowgli back to the man village. Son you of a see, bitch. when he tells Baloo that Shere Khan is after him, Baloo, for no friggin' reason, lies to Mowgli about why he has to go. Maybe it's time for you two mosey along. We're buddies, aren't we? No, we were never friends. I, mean, I certainly never thought of you as my friend. Do I have to spell this out? I don't want you around anymore. Okay, look, this scene in the anime one is kind of lame too, because Mowgli's just being a brat. But Baloo still tells him the truth. And it's Mowgli's constant right. fear of the man village that drives him away. In this version, Baloo convinces him to stay in the jungle. Mowgli was actually going to go to the man village even without Bagheera. So right. why the hell doesn't he just be honest? Go to the village or Shere Khan will kill the shit out of you. He already knows how dangerous he is. In the original, he's never seen him before, but here, he got attacked by him several times. So yeah, go to the man village. Come visit. We'll hang out, just like the original plan we had. Right. It turns out to not be fun for you. 
I will walk you right down to that man village myself. Just till winter. There is no goddamn reason for this pitifully forced friendship breakup. It's lazy. It's done in a million movies to create a third act rift, and it's lazy. Right. The book didn't need him lying. The anime one didn't need him lying. But this one does because it's the grown-up version. So, so, hey, so, so up? hold up. Treating kids with respect and being creative in what you teach them. You lazy assholes! Right. Hold up. So, y'all telling me this right now. And I, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt him, but... So, in, for an adult film, what you're trying to interject to 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 kids especially to young adults who went to go watch this damn movie that it's okay to lie even though it's completely fine to tell the truth as to why this has to happen no you have to lie i don't like this version of the movie already hands down i don't even like it okay so what characters haven't made an appearance yet monkey that's right, monkeys kidnap Mowgli and take him to a temple where King Louie, voiced by Christopher, you bet your ass they made this joke walking, resides. Who, in all fairness, is actually kind of good. I'm not even kidding, it's a totally different tone and attitude, but it kind of works. You, Mankind, you come from the south, the north, what, what part? The south, I guess. You know who I am? I am the king of the Bad Dalag. He's kind of like a mafia boss, soft-spoken but intimidating. He's threatening, but also weirdly engaging. You want to live here? You need a people to protect you. But just when you think this is something untainted by stupid... Now, don't try to kid me, man cub. I'll make a deal with you. Oh my god, is this happening? I desire this man's red fire to make my dream come true. You don't have to do this. Now give me the secret man cub. Come on! Show me what to do. Get out! Get out of there! A man's red flower, so I can be like you. Oh, we'll be do. Okay, so you might be thinking, come on, this song was in the animated one, why not here? Because there is no other point in the movie that's a friggin' musical! Bare Necessity really not. is a song, but not a musical number. It's a tune Baloo teaches Mowgli, and they sing it together. This song is being used to speak and communicate. It's replacing conversation and expressing motivation. Yeah, I, I like the, the conversation only more. Like it in the movie. That was a it's lot like better. It's a full metal jacket when they sing Mickey Mouse Club. They're just singing a song they all know after battle. It makes sense. But if the drill sergeant broke out singing Let It Go and everybody joined him, it'd be friggin' goddamn ludicrous! This is that scene! It's friggin' goddamn ludicrous! How did it get this again?! Baloo comes in to create a distraction as Bagheera saves Mowgli. But before getting him out, Louie reveals that the leader of the wolves is dead. Shere Khan killed him. Again, Bagheera could have relayed that information, but we have to pretend this pointless scene wasn't a pointless scene because, again, grown up version. Finding this out, Mowgli sneaks into the man village to grab the red flower to fight off Shere Khan. A few drops of it fall, and I can see where the phrase spread like wildfire comes from because shit! The whole jungle's on fire in seconds! Okay, this would literally have to go from this to this in a matter of a few minutes. Even wildfire doesn't spread like wildfire! So the animals are now afraid of Mowgli for starting the fire. Even no his shit! Family, but he throws out the fire, which is the stupidest thing he could have done. That was the stupidest thing you could have done. Right? He destroyed their home! You might as well use it for its original intent! But the animals stand behind Mowgli to say thanks for burning everything down, and why the hell didn't we rise up to fight this jackass days earlier? Right. Oh, in my teeth! So all the Animals rush in to take down Shere Khan, or Baloo just rushes in and everybody else just shows moral support. What can we do? We're just killer animals. We can't fight those killer animals. <laughs> it's taken down though, as everyone remembers. Oh yeah, we can like do something. As Mowgli is told not to fight him like a wolf, but fight him like a man. Fight him like a man. You know what this scene needs? Buzzards that sound like the Beatles. It'd be as inconsistent as everything else. Yeah. Mowgli defeats Shere Khan through his inventive ways and he falls to his death. He also manages to convince the elephants to put out the fires. Yeah, they just dug holes with their tusks and let the water there. Though given how fast those flames spread, half of India should be on fire now! True! And the animals honor Mowgli. Uh. 
that night, I saw something I'll never forget. I saw a little boy without a people bring all the jungle together for the very first time. Except for that other time all the animals came together, which apparently happened so often you right. had a name for the place Peace Rock. You could come to the Peace Rock and find all people side by side. Don't dress this up. Because I just caused you your yourself. Fire and somebody else put it out. He's the equivalent of a donkey kicking a lantern. But, okay, you know the drill. After all this talk of acting like a man, fighting like a man, and thinking like a man, the time has come for him to go absolutely nowhere. Interesting change. What? In just about every version, he goes back to the man, man village. village. Because they build up, that's where he belongs. But this one doesn't do that. Why? No goddamn clue! I have no idea how this makes anything better. The story, in most of its forms, is about accepting the responsibility of who you are and where you'll grow best. But this one ends on an image just as lazy as the writing, closing the exact same book used in the animated film. Jesus because, you know, you just saw Christ. the animated film, except it's live action! They're so similar! Guys, I don't get this. Neither do I. I know objectively this isn't an awful film. If there were no books or other versions, if I mean, it's, just yeah, it's not as bad, as but damn. But there is a book and a perfectly good animated film, and nothing in this is better than either of those. The original story is aggressive, dark, and full of great troops. The animated film is cute, charming, and full of unforgettable characters. This tries to combine them without realizing what made them work on their own. Are you going to remember any of these characters more no. than the animated one? Probably nope. not. Are you going to remember the language or lessons as much as the book? I don't even think the movie remembers its own language or lessons. It keeps changing so much. This is the law. There's a rock. That's my rock. That's my rock. I know there's no real harm in enjoying this film, but leaving out what made the book and the animated version so enjoyable and even important is a huge disservice to the storytellers who understand their medium and used it so cleverly. Whether it's a delightful little kids movie you'll return to more and more, or an epic coming of age story you'll return to more and more, this one will most likely be looked at less and less. Hey, you know what? I want Disney to do an authentic version of this book. I want it so authentic that the author's name is above the title. The Jungle Book. Oh, wait. That's... Not directed by the idiot who directed the Mummy movie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe this version's not as bad as I thought. <gasps> I'm a nostalgia critic. I remember it so you don't have to. Oh gosh, that was exhausting to watch. That was honestly uh, uh, exhausting. What the hell are they getting out of this? What? What? What in the? Well, money. They're getting money out of it, Joseph. But other than that, what are they getting out of this? I, I didn't I, I didn't really care for this. I still don't care for it now. <sighs> but you know what? I have nothing else to say for this. <laughs> Other than, you know, it is what it is. Because Disney is obviously going to keep doing this, this type of thing until, it you know, they get tired of it. And that's going to be for a long freaking time. But anyway, you guys, that's going to be it for this reaction. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys did, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Share this video if you would like on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, as such. This has been The Real Sakurai, and I hope y'all have a fantastic day. Peace.